basic terminologies in accounting. We are not going to go into the deep details. We will inshallah proceed with that in the later sessions. <laughs>
and then you will make financial statements to see how much company is earning profit and uh, what is the uh, and what is its financial position and then you are going to communicate this information to the marketing manager to let him know what is the financial position of the company and in this way you are going to assist him uh, that whether to launch advertisement or not for example if the company does not have enough money to spend on his advertisement and the marketing manager proceeds with the idea without knowing the financial position uh, which can be only described by an accountant then uh, this advertisement will be a complete failure and this will let the company to go back so basically the task of an accountant uh, is to record the transactions uh, then he has to organize the entire information in the form of financial statements which uh, we will learn in this course and then he has to analyze and interpret those financial statements and finally he has to communicate the information to other people in the organization and aid them in the decision making process and this information needs to be communicated using the certain terminologies uh, which we will be studying over here and uh, this is why um, accounting is also known as the language of business moving on to the role of accounting uh, i hope you have understood from my above explanation that how accounting plays a role in every part of the organization it is not restricted to a marketing manager to make decisions regarding advertising uh, this was just an example accounting also aids owner of the business to track how much profit the business is earning or how uh, much loans they have borrowed from others or uh, lent to others in order to assure that they are stable and they are not going to go bankrupt accounting information also helps to compare the current performance of the business uh, with the previous ones and with the performance of other organizations through the financial statements to see whether they are making improvement or how much improvement do they need accounting records also help government to check whether the company is paying reasonable amount of tax moreover if the employees were promised that if the company will earn certain amount of profit uh, they are going to distribute am uh, profits among the employees so it also becomes really easy for the employees to keep track of the profits that the company earns now that we have understood what accounting is let's move on to some basic terminologies which we will be using in business the business, the terminologies uh, we will be discussing are written in front of you and we will uh, be discussing them one by one business business is an uh, any entity uh, that is set up with the aim to earn profit if the organization such as non profit organization is set up then it is not known as business like advisors is a platform through which we just aim to spread education and not to earn profit so advisors will not be considered as a business now i have used the word entity in the definition of business we are using this because we keep the accounting records of business away from the personal life of the owner for example if the owner is investing some cash into the business then on the organization's accounting books we will record that the owner has invested this amount of cash but for example if owner has bought a dining set uh, for his own house and if that has nothing to do with the business then uh, that won't be the part of accounting records of the business so this is uh, actually known as the business business entity concept Uh, which tells that the financial activities in the personal life of the owner are separate from the financial activities which are occurring in the business and i am continuously using the phrase the owner of the business we can replace this phrase by using one word that is entrepreneur so the owner of the business is actually known as entrepreneur an entrepreneur who is going to start a business alone is going to be known as sole proprietor he will be the only owner of the whole business and if two or more than two entrepreneurs are going to uh, form a business then they will be known as partners or shareholders we will understand the difference between partners and shareholders deeply in our future lectures um, i don't want to overwhelm you in this introductory lecture with lots of information 
moving on to the types of businesses uh, we have actually three types of businesses and i will describe these uh, with examples uh, a coca cola bottle is first of all manufactured somewhere it requires sugar water color preservative and carbon dioxide to be mixed up and then it is packed in the bottle this all is done in a manufacturing business and it is very clear from the name that in a manufacturing business things are manufactured we also have trading business which just borrow borrows manufactured things from manufacturing businesses and then sell to customer or consumers of the product uh, like metro cash and carry buy manufactured products and sell to the customers we also have service businesses that just provide you the services and do not give you physical product they charge you for what the services they have provided to you moreover you need to be the uh, part of service when uh, they are provided to you for example a barber is just going to cut your hair and he will uh, get the payment for that your presence is necessary when the services will be delivered to you profits uh, moving on to the concept of profits and revenues uh, we are going to see deeply in the statement of profit and loss uh, that how profits are calculated uh, but right now we are going to just develop the concept of what profit is many non accountants confuse the two words revenues and profits uh, they think that uh, these two terms are the same but uh, there is a great difference in both of the terms i am going to explain you uh, this with, uh, with an example uh, for example you are making a payment to be uh, sold in the market uh, and you bought paint paint brushes uh, a frame for that and it cost you a uh, let's say 700 rupees you decided to sell that for 1000 rupees in the market if you are successful in doing so then you will earn a profit of 300 rupees the 300 rupees will be your profit the 1000 rupees which you will earn without it uh, deducting the expenses is no uh, is your revenue uh, when you deduct the expenses from what you have earned uh, then the leftover amount is profit now the question arises uh, is that uh, from where do you get the information for calculating profits uh, we need information of revenue and expenses to calculate profit because we subtract our expenses from the revenues to calculate profit the example i have just given is extremely simplified in this example the information of revenue uh, we got was just the money we got after sales in businesses we, uh, since we deal with large amount of sales so some people also return our products back uh, which we also need uh, to account for in our revenues we will discuss this thing deeply in future lectures right now i'm just bringing you into the actual life situation of business similarly for expenses uh, we would not only account for the cost of paint paint brushes and frames in businesses we might also have to account for electricity bill of the room in which you are sitting to make pictures and the petrol of the car in which you drove to market to buy the paints etc or you drove to sell the pictures in the market so we take many things into account when we calculate profits of the business methods uh, that is uh, gap and ifrs uh, you should know that everything works following some laws and rules similarly accounting financial statements are made and analyzed according to the rules uh, set by ifrs which stands for international financial reporting standards which is followed in around about 110 countries we will also make financial statements uh, following the rules set by ifrs we uh, have another collection of the rules which are uh, different but not completely different from ifrs these are known as gap generally accepted accounting principles and uh, these will uh, these were created by united states of america and are executed in america 
now uh, we will understand that how technology has helped accounting to grow um, as technology uh, has evolved new methods of accounting came forward uh, now we have a lot of accounting softwares that are or, uh, that the organizations use for example peach tree quickbooks tally and many others in pakistan we use uh, siddharth heather financials some of the benefits of impact of technology on accounting include accuracy of the information uh, the speed of the information uh, a large am amount of information can be stored in small devices like usb a computer can perform the task of many people it is very easy to secure all the data by using the passwords etc but besides these advantages there are disadvantages too for example if these passwords are hacked then all the information can be collected by the hacker or it can be misused uh, misused uh, moreover installing the softwares can also be very expensive first of all you have to pay to buy these softwares then you have to educate your employees how to use that moreover you have to keep yourself update with the latest inventions and for example if an accountant entered the figure wrong or figures wrong in the software then the entire result obtained will be wrong so there are pros and cons of everything it is upon us how we get the maximum benefit out of that so this was all for today hope you understood the concepts very well uh, in the ne next lecture we will proceed uh, with the numerical part and we will understand accounting more deeply my advice to you is that please do revise these concepts once so that you can have a clear understanding inshallah i will meet with you people next week allah hafiz